You all remember Michael Avenatti, my dark horse pick for the 2020 presidential election. And he was my dark horse because he was the most militant of the Democrats. He was the guy who kept talking about punching President Trump and I've got to hit back and we got to punch twice as hard. And when they go hot, when they go low, then we punch back and all this kind of stuff. Well, it turns out that there are now allegations that he didn't just punch back against President Trump. He punched back against a woman. Uh, here are the allegations courtesy of KTLA. Michael Avenatti who skyrocketed to fame as a critic of President Donald Trump and the lawyer for porn actress Stormy Daniels, was arrested on Wednesday and booked on a felony domestic violence charge, according to the LAPD. Now, you'll recall that Michael Avenatti is also the guy who trotted out Julie Swetnick to claim that Brett Kavanaugh had been involved in gang rape, that Brett Kavanaugh, who is now justice on the Supreme Court, had been involved in getting girls drunk or or drugged at parties, and then he had involved himself in gang rape trains. And Michael Avenatti pushed all that out there. And Democrats jumped on it because Michael Avenatti is, is their friend. Michael Avenatti is somebody who says mean things about President Trump. And that's our only standard for good people now. If you say something mean about President Trump, this means inherently you're a good person. Well, in this case, it turns out that Michael Avenatti, the evidence isn't in, right? The, we don't know. We don't know. Presumption of innocence applies. Michael Avenatti, we don't know whether he's guilty or whether he is innocent in a court of law. But it's kind of ironic that a guy who suggested believe all women is now saying, well, don't believe this one over here with the black eye. The alleged victim in the case had visible injuries, according to Officer Tony M., a police spokesman. Avenatti slammed the allegation as completely bogus and fabricated and meant to do harm to my reputation in a statement released by his law firm. And here is what Avenatti had to say after being released on $50,000 bail. I have never struck a woman I never will strike a woman. I have been an advocate for women's rights my entire career, and I'm going to continue to be an advocate. I am not going to be intimidated from stopping what I am doing. Believe all women, except that one who I allegedly hit. Don't believe her. She's a liar. So this is all going very well for Michael Avenatti. He says he'll be fully exonerated. And he suggested that he that the woman hit him first, apparently. Stormy Daniels, who, of course, is the great feminist of our time, has released a statement on the incident saying these are serious and obviously very troubling allegations. But right now, that is all they are allegations. We should all reserve judgment until the investigation an investigation. Michael has said he welcomes is complete. And that's what I'm going to do. Agree. But kind of weird coming from the same people who said that Brett Kavanaugh should be run out of town on a rail, lose his Supreme Court judgeship, lose his actual life, career, family on the basis of unverified and unverifiable allegations allegations that are now being investigated by the Senate Judiciary Committee for being false. Uh, Apparently, here's what TMZ says. We're told Wednesday afternoon the woman was on the sidewalk on her cell phone with sunglasses covering her eyes, sobbing and screaming on the phone. I can't believe you did this to me. I'm going to get a restraining order against you. We're told security brought her inside the building, took her upstairs, and Michael showed up five minutes later and ran into the building. He screamed repeatedly, she hit me first. So this is, that's, Great. She hit me first, by the way, is not an actual defense to domestic violence allegations. So good stuff all the way around. Avenatti, for his part, is now blaming Jacob Wall. So all of the storylines are colliding, the writers of season four of Trump. And I will say this. They really know how to ratchet up the tension and bring back old storylines that we'd forgotten about, like Michael Avenatti and Brett Kavanaugh. Like we were beyond those storylines. And then the writers were like, you know what? Let's bring that back. Let's bring that back. Like, Whoa, good callback, writers. Let's see if we can somehow intertwine these strands and really build this thing to an epic conclusion for the for the second or third episode of season four of Trump, the show. And there are a few lessons to be learned here. One, you know what's great in the United States? Due process and the presumption of innocence. Those things are awesome. And maybe Michael Avenatti and Democrats will learn a valuable lesson here that regardless of your political leanings, it's good that we have a system that protects your innocence until you are proven guilty. Number two, what the hell is going on? Maybe that's maybe that's what we should learn. What is going on? Like, the what? Lesson number three. If a guy ever says, believe all women, and he just spends all his time shouting, believe all women, I would say that a certain amount of the time, those are the guys that you should trust the least with women. Because honest to goodness, that is such a virtue signaling position that makes no sense in the real world, that it makes you suspicious of the person who says it in the first place. So, All of this is absolutely delightful, obviously. Uh, And by delightful, I mean garbage. But welcome to to the world of of Trump season four. Obviously, this has nothing to do with President Trump. It's just that everything is crazy.